Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Warrant exercise and rate of return calculations. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we're in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab, in essence, being an answer key. Information on the left-hand side, we're going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side, looking into the calculation of our warrants, assuming that we exercise them at some future date and thinking about the gain that may result from it in this case. So we got the warrants that we purchased. We're going to assume we started off purchasing 90 warrants and we're going to say we purchased them a year ago. The cost per war warrant, so each warrant cost us $25. The exercise price, meaning if we were to exercise the warrant, the cost of the stock that we would be purchasing with the warrants would be $34. The number of shares can purchase with one warrant. Let's put an S there. Number of shares is going to be two. So one warrant can allow us to purchase two shares at the exercise price of $34. We're going to assume then that the warrants expire today, some point in the future. We would like to exercise them at that point. There's no speculative premium left, and so we're not gonna have any speculative premium at this point in time. And then the common stock price is gonna be $61 at that point in time. So let's calculate then the, the purchase price of the warrants, the exercise value, and then the profit on it, as well as the rate of return calculation. So we're going to look at the number of warrants that we purchased. We purchased multiple warrants this time. So we got 90 warrants that were purchased. The cost that was per warrant was $25. So that means that the purchase price is going to be the multiple of those two. The font group underline, that's going to be our warrant. Let's say warrant total cost is going to be equal to the 90 times the 25. So when we exercise it, the exercise value that we're going to have is going to be the number of warrants, the 90 warrants that we had. We get two stocks for each warrant that we can exercise. So the number of shares per warrant is two. So a little bit more complicated with that. We're going to say font group and underline. That means the total shares we're looking at. Total shares. Let's go ahead and indent that one. Alignment indent. Just to get a little bit of a space here, we're going to say the 90 times the 2. So we're looking total shares then at 180. The stock price, the stock price was $61 at that point in time when we exercised it. And the exercise price was, the exercise price is $34. $34, so if I underline that, font group and underline, there we have that. That means we have a difference difference of the 61 minus the 34 or the $27. Let's go ahead and indent that. Make it a, give a little space in our worksheet. Let's put an underline here. So we're going to underline it. So that's going to give us a value if we exercise this. Exercise value, which is going to be equal to the one. 180,000, I mean 180 minus the, the, or times the 27. Let's try that again. Times the 27, and that's going to give us our 4,860. So in other words, once again, we've got total stocks of 180 because we had 90 warrants and we get two stocks per warrant that we could purchase at the $34. And the $34 is different from the current market price of the $61 by 27. So the value that we're getting from the warrants at this point is going to be the 180 shares at that difference between the stock price and the warrant which would be kind of like the intrinsic value type of calculation but we're exercising it we're going to call the exercise value of the 4860. so if we think of the profit that we had now we've got this difference between the exercise price and the the uh, the stock price at this point, which is valued at the 4860 but we also paid for the warrants. The warrants cost that we paid up top was up here. So we paid the 2250 for the warrants. So that gives us our profit. Profit. Now, no, we, we haven't necessarily, it's kind of a difference when you think of tax profit and whatnot, because, you know, we have, we've exercised the warrants. So now we're holding on to the stock. We're valuing the stock at the current stock price. We haven't yet sold uh, the stock and so on. So we've got the 4860 minus the warrant cost. That's going to give us our 2610 
2610. If we then think about the rate of return calculation, we can look at that profit calculation of the 2610, comparing it to the cost, what we paid for the warrants, of the 2250. And that's going to give us our rate of return, rate of return equal to the 2610 divided by the 2250. Percentifying that number group, percentify, we're at uh, the 116%.